Well, good morning. Thank you for being here and making your presence known as we gather together in worship, in song, and prayer. So it's really critical for you to be here because your voice matters. Our collective voice matters. And I appreciate it that you are here. Any announcements that we all need to know or any of us need to know? None. All right. Well, then I think we're ready for worship. I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your, sons are, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house. For all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
Let us pray. God of all peoples, your arms reach out to embrace all those who call upon you. Teach us as disciples of your Son to love the world with compassion and constancy, that your name may be known throughout the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading is from Isaiah chapter 56, verses 1 and 6 through 8. Thus says the Lord, maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. And the foreigners who join themselves to the Lord to minister to him, to love the name of the Lord and to be his servants, all who keep the Sabbath and do not profane it, and hold fast my covenant, these I will bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and their sacrifices will be accepted on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all people. Thus says the Lord God, who gathers the outcasts of Israel, I will gather others to them besides those already gathered. The word of the Lord. We will read, <laughs> as soon as I turn the page, thank you. We will read Psalm 67 responsively. May God be merciful to us and bless us. May the light of God's face shine upon us. Let the, let the nations, excuse me, let your way be known, I'm sorry. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations on earth. Let the people praise you, God, that all the people The earth has brought forth its increase. God, our own God, has blessed us. Our second reading comes from Romans chapter 11, verses 1 through 2a and 29 through 32. Paul writes, I ask then, has God rejected his people? By no means. I myself am an Israelite, a descendant of Abraham, a member of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not rejected his people whom he foreknew. For the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Just as you were once disobedient to God, but have now received mercy because of their disobedience, so they have now been disobedient in order that, by the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God has imprisoned all in disobedience, so that he may be merciful to all. The word of the Lord. Christ according to Matthew. Glory. Jesus called the crowd to him and said to them, Listen and understand. It is not what goes into the mouth that defiles a person, but it is what comes out of the mouth that defiles. Then the disciples approached and said to him, Do you know that the Pharisees took offense when they heard what you said? And he answered, Every plant that my heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted. Let them alone. They are blind guides of the blind. And if one blind person guides another, both will fall into a pit. But Peter said to him, explain this parable to us. Then he said, are you still without understanding? 
Do you not see that whatever goes into the mouth enters the stomach and goes out into the sewer? But what comes out of the mouth proceeds from the heart, and this is what defiles. For out of the heart come evil intentions, murder, adultery, fornication, theft, false witness, slander. These are what defile a person. But to eat with unwashed hands does not defile. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat of the crumbs that fall from your master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Then a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord son of, son of David. But he did not answer her at all. But she came back and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Not only does Jesus not answer her, he dismisses, he dismisses her very presence and responds directly to the disciples who just want to get rid of her, that this mission of salvation was only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Undeterred, this desperate woman with a desperately ill daughter drew even closer to Jesus with the same words of pleading we heard Peter shout last week's story after falling into the Sea of Galilee. Lord, help me. Jesus retorts with some of the harshest words we hear in all of the Gospels. It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. Unwilling to give in, this outsider by reason of both gender and ethnicity responds all the more eloquently. Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. What a stunning response, born out of sheer desperation and an unending love for her daughter. Jesus then answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. Many of us are more familiar with such harsh language and imagery from writings in the Old Testament. We're more familiar with the God of wrath who brings forth death and destruction found in the stories of Noah's Ark, Sodom and Gomorrah, and the prophets of Baal who competed with God's prophet Elijah, or the story of God directing Moses to order that the Levites kill some 3,000 of their Israelite brothers and sisters who participated in the worship of the golden calf. The prophets certainly were notorious with the veracity of their language in exhorting the people of, on God's behalf. Back in that they were not considered, the prophets were not considered good old boys. They spoke for God and the coming judgment or punishment for those who did not observe God's ways. Honestly, I think that's some of the, this wrathful language and imagery why so many people have issues with the Old Testament. They much prefer the loving God that's portrayed in the New. That said, Jesus is no stranger to harsh words of rebuke. Remember when he calls the, Phar the Pharisees brood of vipers? Or what of him calling various and sundry religious leaders hypocrites? 
Now, I get, in today's vernacular, that really doesn't mean anything. Everybody calls somebody a hypocrite nowadays. It's lost kind of its power. But how about the display of emotion and anger when he entered the temple court and saw what was taking place involving the money changers and the buying and selling of birds for ritual sacrifice that resulted in him turning over their tables and not allowing anyone to bring anything through the temple. Jesus was not always mild-mannered as we like to make him be. And as best as I'm able to discern, Jesus saved these outbursts of language and action for those in authority, those who should know better, those that took advantage of other people, and those who thought themselves to be worthy versus those they deemed unworthy. This is what makes today's reading so jarring, so challenging. Jesus not only gives this desperate outsider the cold shoulder, but when he does finally acknowledge and address her, he seems to have a canned answer that would suggest that she's not eligible for what he's offering to his targeted and preferred group, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So what do we are to make of this story? These are words we're not used to hearing Jesus say. And the usual commentaries and resources I use each week offered a variety of potential reasons for Jesus' unbecoming and shocking behavior with this woman. Some suggest that he was just having a bad day. Others wrote, of all that Jesus had been doing leading up to this encounter, and we remember them being the feeding of the 5,000, and then saving Paul from, I mean, uh, Peter from the Sea of Galilee, he just needs some rest. And admittedly, one can make those arguments, right? He's on his way to Jerusalem. He's got a serious focus ahead of him. So I can kind of play with that during the week. Others offer that this was a teaching on faith, a testing of the woman's faith for the benefit of the gathered disciples. None of these worked for me. At least they didn't until about Friday. Whatever the rationale, this scene makes me, and I suspect you, uncomfortable because this is not the Jesus of whom we are accustomed. In contrast to Jesus' reaction and words he used with the religious and secular leaders who serve their own interests, this encounter involves a desperate woman at the end of her proverbial rope. And we know by now that Jesus just does not shun the lost, the sick, the lame, the outcast, or the desperate. So why today? And I'm not sure that I have the definitive answer to that question, but I do have a couple of ideas that came to mind this week after I spent some serious time with God saying, what is it you want me to say this week? Right? I don't write this on my own. This is not of my own making. I ask God, what do the people of First Lutheran need to hear? What do the people at Holy Spirit need to hear from your word this week? I'm not smart enough to figure that out. And yet he, every week, he gives me something to say. One thought is that this story does have something to do with the woman's faith. And our faith as well, particularly in the face of indifference. And the other holds up a mirror to my own actions and how I should have or how I have already responded to people who are desperate or lonely or find themselves as outsiders looking in. So from the faith perspective, this unyielding woman in desperate need of healing for her demon-possessed daughter finds in the person of Jesus the solution. She has a need to be addressed, and she is unwilling to take no for an answer. And I wonder, how many of us have gone to God in the same way, taking a request for mercy 
or healing or guidance, only to sense a resounding silence in response. How many times have our prayers gone unanswered as if God has turned his face from us? How many times have we found ourselves begging for even the smallest bit of solace only to find that maybe we just aren't worthy of God's grace and mercy? And I suspect many of us have found ourselves in these circumstances. And yet, and yet, as people of faith, we continue to seek God's response, don't we? We continue to rely on his promises that he hears our prayers and knows our desires before we ask. We continue to trust in the God who said that he would always be with us and never forsake us. We continue to show up because that is what we're called to do, to pray and seek God's will and direction in our lives, hoping that our prayers align for his purpose with us. And we need go no further than Mother Teresa's conflicted relationship with God, with whom she felt a deep absence for over, over half her life. And yet, here's the, that phrase again, she kept showing up. She kept ministering to people that needed her, even when she felt that God wasn't a part of it. For over 50 years of her life, she felt that loneliness, and yet she kept showing up. She kept ministering. She kept praying. She kept doing the things we're asked to do. And finally, this story had me thinking of how I have experienced indifference from others and how I have demonstrated indifference to others. The disciples wanted nothing to do with this Canaanite woman and wanted Jesus to just get rid of her. And have you ever felt like folks wanted to get rid of you for not being worthy to be part of their group? Have you ever had people turn the other way when you appear on the scene? Have you ever been pushed aside in the midst of an incredible need or pain as if you really didn't exist? If so, you know exactly what that Canaanite woman was feeling. Conversely, have you ever found yourself doing the exact same thing to someone else because you either were too busy or maybe you just didn't find their need worthy of your aid? We are created in the image of God and as committed followers of his, then we are to exemplify his characteristics of love and compassion and patience and generosity and selflessness. And I think this is a reason the story is so jarring. We observe Jesus acting like us and not us acting like him. We should be set back on our heels when, that, when we recognize that, we should be on our proverbial knees asking for forgiveness and forgiveness of those who have done it to us. Who are we to withhold assistance from someone in need? Who are we to shun those whose situations we deem bad or caused by their own making? I think this jarring story tells us in stark terms, that we actually might see our, Jesus portraying us and it gets really close to home and we don't like it. So this beleaguered woman persisted and Jesus responded. Woman, great is your faith. Let it be as you wish. May we persist, persist with the assurance that God listens and knows the inner workings of our hearts. May we resist the desire to keep others from experiencing relief and wholeness, assistance and compassion. May we hear in our hearts and minds the same divine response. 
Great is your faith. Let it be as you wish. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's own Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we enter our um, worship time of prayers of intercession, I invite you, if you haven't already, and I'm sure you have, so I don't, I don't mean that negatively, but during this time of prayer, let us especially, because we all come with things on our hearts and minds, each one of us here today, but let's, I invite you to, especially this morning, raise up our brothers and sisters in Maui, in Medical Lake, in Tyler, um, wherever in eastern Washington there are fires, up here at Hayden. Canada, um, I can't imagine losing a house. I can't imagine not knowing what's going on with property or animals or friends and family. So as we enter this time this morning, I just invite your special intentions for those dealing with that and giving thanks for all of those folks who are out there each and every day volunteering and doing the good work of trying to help others. I invite also um, a special thanksgiving and praise for David and Tina Sunquist, who I understand are celebrating their 30th wedding anniversary. So congratulations to them as well. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, for those in need and all of creation. O oh God, your spirit gathers the church. Shepherd those who are newly baptized and newly ordained in the proclamation of the gospel. Breathe life into ecumenical and interreligious endeavors and support missionaries throughout the globe. Hear us, O God. You created the earth and all its inhabitants and declared it good. 
clean polluted skies, seas, and soil, provide nourishment to plants and animals, and make us aware of our impact on, on the environment. Hear us, O oh God. You call leaders to bridge differences and practice generosity. Inspire all in authority to protect people in harm's way, deliver those in bondage, support fair elections, provide care for military personnel and veterans, and show mercy to those for whom we have responsibility. Hear us, O God. You provide for those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. Embrace people who have been rejected because of difference. Heal trauma caused by racism or prejudice. Shield any who are persecuted, console the dying, and heal the sick. Hear us, O God. O God, your journey with us in all of life transitions. Guide those preparing for baptism, marriage, and retirement. Guide our church council and committees to their visioning and ministry. Safeguard those who travel. Hear us, O oh God. We give you thanks for those who now rest from their labors, especially remembering this morning Bernard of Clairvaux, whom the church commemorates today. Motivate us by their lives of dedication to the gospel until that day when we join with them in our eternal home. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we command all for whom we pray. In the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And you. Peace. Great to see you.
Let us pray. God of mercy and grace, the eyes of all wait upon you, and you open your hand in blessing. Fill us with good things at your table, that we may come to the help of all in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened for us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs and angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Indeed, holy, almighty, and merciful God, you are most holy, and great is the majesty of your glory. You so love the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for this coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to all to drink, saying, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering, therefore, his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your gifts of bread and wine, so that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin, may be formed to live as your holy people, to be given our inheritance with all your saints. To you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory, in your holy church, now and forever. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready.
Let us pray. O oh God, you, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry through Jesus Christ. Amen. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. The God of grace bless you now and forever. Amen. This is the mission that we share in Christ's name, to praise God, nurture faith, and serve all. Dear friends, go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.